Democrat joins us now. Steady Hoyer is with us. Congressman, do you think the fear thing was overplayed? Neil, this is not shutting down government, so obviously it's going to be a slow erosion, uh, not a, uh, an immediate tidal wave. Uh, but I don't think there's any doubt that when you talk to uh, uh, leaders in the Defense Department, uh, uh, in the military, that they believe sequestration is going to have a, uh, a very negative effect on our ability to uh, maintain national security. There's no doubt that uh, when CBO says that this is going to cost 750,000 jobs over the next 18 uh, uh, to 20 months, that uh, those are big consequences. Now, they're not, they haven't happened. Uh, a door didn't slam. A door didn't open. Uh, uh, people didn't stream out of government offices being shut out on the uh, on any day or yesterday or today. Uh, but I think there is going to be a slow erosion. I think the numbers that uh, are being reached are unreasonable. As a matter of fact, these numbers that uh, I think Paul Ryan is going to mark his budget to are uh, numbers that were presented on the House floor uh, two years ago as numbers uh, to uh, follow. And Paul Ryan voted no on the Republican Study Committee's budget. I understand that. But, but again, on the sequestration thing, Congress, I just want to be clear because yeah. Charting it out, they might be onerous to your point, and they might have longer term implications that we're not appreciating right now. But looking right. at a chart of government spending and where this sort of slices out, these sequester cuts are just tiny, tiny little percentages. You know, and, and I, Neil, I, but I, I, I do say because Governor Ed Rendell had said, talking about the fear tactics used here and about the administration, they probably went over the top in terms of saying the consequences. We're going to be horrible, especially because it happened and the lines of the airports aren't long and the world has not changed overnight. What do you think of that? This happened, what, uh, a few days ago, Neil. Uh, this is not shutting down government. This is a slow erosion. Uh, so it will happen. But now let me, let me speak to this small percentage that you're talking about. Uh, and I hear people talking about 3.7, 3.8 trillion budget. That's not what these cuts are out of. Essentially, these cuts are out of the 30 percent of the budget, uh, which is about half on the defense side and half on the non-defense side of what is called discretionary spending. Seventy percent of that uh, uh, is not included in, in, in this figure. Uh, so the sequester largely, not exclusively, but largely comes out of the discretionary side of the budget, and therefore we're talking five, six, seven, uh, eight percent. Uh, cut. Now, uh, obviously, this year will be the first year of those cuts. But I will tell you, if you talk to Hal Rogers, who's the Republican chair of the Budget Committee, I mean, of the Appropriations Committee, he'll tell you making these cuts uh, over the next 10 years uh, that Sequester will require is hurt very badly the operations of government. Maybe the so, but, but can you blame the Americans security. though? God, looking at this, and the market, of course, been racing to do highs this week through this. Are they just whistling past the graveyard? Are they merrily going along, naive to the calamity to come? Because they might look at this and say, well, awkward cuts, sloppy cuts, even damaging cuts via sequestration beat no cuts at all. That appears to be what they're saying. Well, I think you're, you're right because they haven't seen, as I said, government shut down. They haven't seen a cataclysmic right, right. event. I agree with that, Neil, and, and nor did anybody expect that to happen. This is a plan, and this is not just a plan for this year or uh, April or May or June. This is a plan for the next 10 years, uh, and I think it's going to have very devastating okay. consequences for our economy. And I think Paul Ryan, frankly, when he tries to present a budget, which was pursuant to the deal that Boehner made with his most conservative uh, uh, members to uh, uh, make sure we didn't go over the cliff, yeah. uh, is, is a budget that's not going to be real. And, but uh, even you uh, yourself, these numbers aren't but real. Congress, even you yourself were open to addressing things like Medicare and other entitlements. Oh, I, no, ho, ho, ho. That, I, this Neil, is a separate a, issue. That's I, an I know. That's a entirely Bear different you, issue. I'm, I'm for a balanced deal. You're I'm for a big for deal. But uh, when I'm you talked about with looking at Medicare, sir, I just want to yeah. be very clear. Because Nancy Pelosi had said she wouldn't mess with them, paraphrasing here, uh, anything having to do with raising the retirement age or all that. I think I got the gist of that right. What, are, uh, is that off the table for you as well, that whatever you're looking at at Medicare, Neil, for example, what, will... What I have consistently said is everything is on the table. It has to be. Including uh, raising now, the very age. Frankly, my Republican friends say, revenues, we've done that, been there, it's over. That's not accurate. You cannot get to where we need to get without looking at additional revenues. And frankly, on top of the revenues you already got. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the revenues that we already got are about 
uh, what, 40%, uh, 35% of what uh, uh, the, the uh, gang of six, uh, uh, three Republican senators, three Democratic senators, uh, uh, Simpson Bowles, uh, Domenici Rivlin, all of them indicated you've got to get significantly more revenue than that. So right, those Neil, Republicans who are chafing that that last deal, they figure you, you got the better of them by getting a deal oh, that oh. was 40 to 1 in favor of more spending than, 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 than anything else, that you don't feel uh, Neil, that they, they're you right. you and I both know that was a huge tax cut. That was a huge tax cut from what was in place. You remember on right. the day that we voted on it, in place was a higher tax structure uh, for uh, not only the 2% uh, of Americans that we affected, or one percent of Americans that we fight, but for the other ninety-eight percent. No, that I understand. Uh, we, what they're saying is what was taxes. agreed to. I, you're quite right. They, they, those rates all would yeah. have expired had that not been the case. But that the deal they got was m weighed heavily more in favor of raising taxes than cutting spending, and they don't want to get schnookered again. What do you say to them? They didn't. They didn't get schnookered at all. We had cut a trillion dollars pursuant to the Boehner uh, rule that if we're going to raise the debt and not have America. Uh, welch on its debts, uh, not pay its debts, and raise the debt limit, uh, we had to come up with $2.2 trillion. Well, we came up with a trillion dollars, as you know, of cuts, uh, prospectively, but, but came up with those cuts. those are baked over cuts, right? Those are warmed over cuts that were agreed to before, right? On no, the whole no, 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 they, no. They were in the Budget Control Act. That was the, we warmed over. I mean, it was in the Budget Control Act, but we'd already made those cuts. We hadn't done any revenues. So when you say uh, 40 to 1, that's not accurate, Neil. We did uh, 930 to be exact, plus interest, uh, and then we did uh, 600 billion in, in revenues. Now that's about 60. Uh, uh, for, right. uh, no, I know, 60, 40. So let me ask you so that. To be fair, I think you got to okay. count what we did, not just put it in your pocket and say, okay, now we're going to make fair it. Fair enough, deal. fair enough. We can go back and forth on okay. the numbers and who said what and when yeah. and how the math adds up. I do want to add it. Obviously, Republicans feel that they survived this whole sequestration thing pretty well and that the economy <laughs> did okay, markets did okay this week. It's put the administration in a box, not being able to crow about a market that raced to new highs every day this week. So they feel they got the upper hand. You seem to be saying that down the road they might not be so cocky because these cuts will come back to hurt them and, and hurt the economy. I think these, I, but what do you I think, think these cuts now? are going to come back to hurt people. But what if they don't? What if they the don't? You, you have a convenient well, built-in excuse, let, right? Uh, would, wouldn't it all be nice if, if, if they won't? Uh, but the pretense uh, that, that, that they won't, I think, is not accurate. Now, if they don't, yeah, you're right. But if they do, uh, as I expect them to do, and as CBO says, uh, uh, job loss, uh, as military says, going to hurt national security. I don't say that. Uh, and the generals are saying that. The admirals are saying that. They're not, they're not Democrats or Republicans. I don't know what their parties are. Uh, but when you have uh, uh, General uh, Udiano, when you have General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, saying these cuts are going to hurt national security, I'm but are not you saying say that. I, I know what you're saying, sir. But are you saying yeah. that down the road, if there's I think, the slightest by the way, hiccup, I, I agree with them, though. Uh, all right, but if I'm there's the slightest it, hiccup, if there's the slightest hiccup, I just get a feeling that it, it won't be a slowdown coming on. It will be Republicans' fault for what they did on sequestration. Are you going to do that? Uh, look, we'll have to see what's going to play out. But right. what we really need, Neil, in all this who back and forth, what's going to, what's happened in the last 48 hours or or last 72 hours? I think that's kind of unrealistic. You and I both know that uh, uh, that it's going to take a longer time to play out as to the consequences of oh, our well, actions. Denny, I don't know. Uh, last week at this time, I was afraid I was going to be eating Mr. Ed the start of this week, and horse meat was going to be everywhere. I mean, that's how scared I Neil, got. You, so, you, so what you, happened? you didn't think that, nor did I think that. And frankly, my opinion. And the president didn't think that. All I right. think he wanted to put out uh, harsh consequences. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you this don't is think he be, overplayed this is going to be a rolling problem. You don't think problem. he overplayed it? Well, let, 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 for the sake of argument, let's say he played it more heavily than was uh, going to be self-evident immediately. Okay. Yes, let's say that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, he was right on the fact, as uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, as CBO says, All right. these are going to have very negative consequences. And very frankly, we, we bought a lot of stuff uh, in gotcha. the last decade, and we didn't pay for it. So we have All a big right. debt. Uh, and okay. who's going to be asked to pay for it? Students, seniors, Medicare, uh, student aid. Uh, well, we all have job to, right? Creation. We all have to. It's yeah. a big old debt. All right, Steny Hoyer, thank you very much. We'll see what happens. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Neil. All right, Steny Hoyer.